Okay, welcome. This is John. I am the host of the Freedom to Draw Unsolved Mysteries. And we are continuing with today's case, the unexplained death of Shelly K. Robertson. We're continuing almost a month-long series of possible Ted Bundy victims you've never heard of. Without further ado, we're going to get to that case. We're going to do the case of Shelly K. Robertson. Not much information is known, but she is suspected highly of being a victim of Mr. Bundy. And if you have any comments or tips, please contact this information right here. You too could help solve a mystery, folks. Without further ado, let's get to the case right now, true believers. All right, guys, let's get into the case of Shelly K. Robertson. We're going to draw her as well as tell you a little bit about her story. Isn't much information on this girl. She was 24 years old. And she lived in Golden, Colorado. Shelly K. Robertson, 24 years old, failed to show up for work in Golden, Colorado on July 1st, 1975, and her new decomposed body was found in August, 500 feet inside a mine on Burtown, Burtown Pass near Winter Park Resort by two mining students. Gas station receipts placed Bundy in the area at the time, but there is no direct evidence of his involvement. The case remains open to this day. So there's no direct evidence, but investigators highly suspect her as being a victim. Uh, the only thing that shouts out to me that's inconsistent is the mine thing. I never really heard of Bundy messing with mines. Um... Maybe if anybody watching has, you can drop me a comment. I love to learn new stuff. But yeah, I never heard of Bundy ever messing around in mines. I know he was a coward, so... Could you be a coward and still go into mines? I guess you could. Can think of all sorts of little things. Would he not want to get dirty in that mine? That would keep him away from messing around doing anything in mines. 
it is dirty and it's cold and its mines are filled with all sorts of things they go creep in the night I don't know I'd have to go and see the area physically because maybe it was set up where he could just go to the edge of the mine and just drop her in there like a, like a hole or something like that you know I don't know but if he's to go in the mine I uh, something just tells me that he would not want to mess around in mines because uh, he, he was a coward and there's all sorts of things in mines that a coward would be afraid of like bats bears maybe not bears but bats definitely bats And here's an interesting article that I found on Bundy's possible victims. Since there is not much information on Miss Shelley K. Robertson. Ted Bundy's conical victim count stands at 20. He loved to toy with investigators about the details of his crimes, including his victim count and their identities, the details of his, his crimes and when they began. He gave conflicting accounts at different times and to different individuals. It was an, an essentially just a game, all just a game to him. Immediately prior to his execution, he decided to open up in a last ditch effort to save his life, ultimately admitting to 30 murders, a definite undercount. However, the confections were largely partial and he repeatedly said he'd talk about that part later. The desperate attempt to postpone his execution, this obviously failed and he took most of his secrets with him to the grave. Yeah, the governor at the time wasn't having any of his games. He stuck to his guns, the governor. Should the governor have given him another break to find out some more information? Probably not, because you never know if all this all this stuff was just games and he made it up. 
The confessions revealed 20 identifiable victims, several of whom he'd never, neither been suspected of nor which had previously drawn any significant media attention. He also confessed to the murders of two unidentified hitchhikers, one he picked up and killed somewhere near Boise, Idaho in September of 1974, the other he'd picked up and killed in near Tumwater, Washington in May of 1973. The Tumwater murder was later supported by gas receipts. He claimed during his final confessions that she had been his very first victim. He was suspected in numerous other cases which he either denied in the very end or was never questioned about. Many of these cases have either since been solved or better suspects have been identified. I know the Rita Curran case he was cleared of because that was one of Rita's downstairs neighbors that did it and I think he went off to be a monk after he committed that murder. He was having a fight with his fiance or something like that and I guess he had always an eye on Rita Curran in Vermont and I, I don't know he tried to have his way with her probably and it went south and the murder was committed by him and that was uh, proven just this past year of the possible victims often listed only Shelly K. Robertson who's right here was he even ask about her during his final interviews we don't know that was he and Sandra Weaver there's conflicting information about that too they seem like viable possibilities and they do 
But I also think that the Sandra Weaver one might have been the Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders. And Bundy might have been a part of them too. Just did a four part series on that. You could check that out on my channel. That was, that, that case has never been solved. That was uh, 1972 and 1973. They were brutal killings of some college girls and some middle school girls. some information on Roberts and Shelley Kager. She was definitely murdered. Shelley Robertson, she was 23. She graduated Arvada, Colorado High School in 1969 and then spent one year at a mission in Biloxi, Mississippi run by the United Church of Christ. When she returned to Colorado, she attended Red Rocks Community College where she studied Spanish. Her whole class spent a semester in Mexico, living in Barra de Navid, a fishing village. She returned there several times during her life. Her friend Susan invited her to go to Alaska, where the girls worked in clam gulch processing fish for one year. So she seemed like an adventurous type, liked to go on adventures and explore so she may have experimented with hitchhiking and that's how she got into the grips of Mr. Bundy that back during this time that was a very popular way of getting around and nobody really seem to worry too much about getting murdered and stuff like that nowadays yeah that's a big concern nowadays people don't generally hitchhike nowadays at all probably has something to do with people like Theodore Bundy, why people don't hitchhike. When she was growing up, Shelley told her mother, Roberta Robertson of Arvada, someday a white horse will come down the road and he will be mine and I'll name him Brownie. Sure enough, one day she ran into the house and announced her mother, there's a white horse out there, but this grandson of Trigger belonged to a rodeo clown. When he heard Shelley's story, he helped the little girl get a little filly she named Bonnie. Shelley rode the dove gray mare bareback as she grew up. On Monday, June 29, 1975, Shelley Robertson disappeared without a trace. 
Seven weeks later, her body was found in a mine shaft near Georgetown. Clear Creek County investigator Bob Denning went to Salt Lake City to interview serial killer Ted Bundy. Bundy was serving time for kidnapping a girl there. She escaped as she was handcuffing her. As he was handcuffing her. Bundy was tried and convicted in that case. Denning asked Bundy about Shelley Robertson. Bundy is reporting to have replied, I don't want to talk about that. Denning has said he is 99% sure that Shelley's killer is Mr. Ted Bundy. Okay, we're about done with this, guys. Uh, that wraps this up. Another case down in the books. If you have any information, please contact these places and they can further tell you where to go. Drop us a like, drop us a subscribe. Share us. We all appreciate it. Once again, true believers, this is John signing out for the freedom to draw unsolved mysteries. True believers, peace out.